Hello everybody, it's Matt for LOL King again here on the first day of uh, the Season 3 World Championship group stage. That's a mouthful. <laughs> and I'm here with uh, Marcel Dexter Feldkamp. Dexter, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. We are in LA, it's sunny outside, and yeah, everything is alright. I was saying actually that um, I'm totally not suited for this heat, but you actually have a hoodie on and I have no idea how you're surviving. Yeah, it's freezing cold. In, like in, in the studio, it's yeah. pretty much freezing cold. And I was like going outside, I'm sweating, and then I'm going in and I'm freezing again. It's like really <laughs> not that good. The lesson for that is that air conditioning is just terrible. Let's just put it that way. Um, Dexter plays Jungle for the Lemon Dogs, who have already played both of their games today. Uh, first one was against SK Telecom T1. T1 yeah. And the second one, uh, I'm blanking. Sorry, you want to help against, me out? Against Gaming Gear, you. Yes. And I believe you guys didn't uh, pick up the victory against SK Telecom. Gaming Gear, however, that was actually a very, let's say it was a very confident win. Yeah, it was a very confident win if you like compare both of the games today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you were playing Vi in the first game and Elise in the second. Something that we've kind of noticed a little bit uh, is that Vi is kind of on the upswing and Elise is kind of on the downswing at least. Do you want to maybe like talk a little bit about both those champions and what they kind of bring to the table? Um, pretty much like uh, Javan's weakness is like dueling potential in the jungle and Vi doesn't have the problem. Like Vi is like level 3 is like probably the best duelist in the game. She can beat everything one on one pretty much except maybe Archox but Archox is like a really like only you, your thing, thing. So I think um, the reason why Y is being picked up is because like she's super, super strong in like mid game, and she has like dragon control, objective control because of her W. It deals like really, I don't know, 300 damage or something to the to the buffs and everything. She has like really clear, uh, good clear time as well, and her ganks are pretty powerful as well if you max Q. So, yeah. and Elise has pretty much like always been like top tier, tier one first pick jungle as well, and even with all the nerfs, it's still like a super good champion. I was talking about that with someone else actually, that one of the things is that Elise just has a kit that makes her useful, you know, wherever she has the cocoon, the W can search out bushes, that kind of stuff. Is that, is it almost impossible to kind of nerf Elise? Um, yeah, I think Elise is kind of impossible to nerf. Like the problem with her is like, even if the numbers are b being tweaked and like her passive is being removed and everything, she still brings like CC to the table, like really like dueling potential. Her ganks are really strong and the, the repel is like a really like nice ganking tool and it resets tower aggro. So in the current meta, it's like if you don't mirror properly, like the, the invades and everything and the red buff, you are forced to dive like one on three, the top laner. And Elise is like still like by far the best champion to do that because she can like reset tower aggro assist and she has a safe stun. And at level three, she has like six spells. So even if Elise later in the game is getting nerfed, you only pick her for early game anyway. Like the, the reason why you pick Elise is pretty much you want to t uh, you want to give your team like uh, early game pressure, and you want to give your team like the head start. And I think Elise like probably the best jungler at giving that. Like even if you like play double AP, Elise is still like super broken. I think. That's kind of one of those things that we were talking about. Like kind of going back to Vi, yeah. um, Vi's ultimate, especially in the kind of I'm seeing a lot of teams pick out like make pick comps where it's just explode one person and then just, you know, clean up the scraps. Vi seems to be a centerpiece of that. Have you guys, how do you guys kind of like build a composition around a champion, you know, that, that, that does one thing very, very well? Um, well, you can play pick comps with like, it almost always depends on the mid lane champion pretty yeah. much. Like bot lane is like, you can play whatever you want and then you have like top lane. It's like, yeah, solo lanes are like more dependent than jungle. Like jungle, you have like universal jungle. You can pick Elise, Vi, and Javan into everything pretty much. Javan opens up pick comps as well because he has like this EQ combo that can pick off targets. He has like this ultimate to pick off as well and to like area control everything. And like Elise has just catch potential as well. And Vi is like, if Vi snowballs, it's like there's snow coming back pretty much because she can just dive people and she can one on one like even solo laners because of her da strong W and the Q is like dealing way too much damage as well. And yeah, she's making like a comeback pretty much right now and being like f even first pick material, I think. That was, uh, the, the, we're kind of seeing some similar, like you were just saying that mid is probably the most important role in there. And something we're seeing a lot is Ari picks, um, especially now that. Europe's always been very mid-centric, you know, always, you know, very aggressive mid players. And now we're seeing, uh, you know, Koreans like Faker who are just absolutely exploding people on Ari. So yeah. is it important that a mid champion brings us some kind of utility? Because you think about it, you know, Vi uses her ultimate or a Q or something. That makes it really easy for Ari to, to land a charm. Yeah. 
So compare that with someone like Cassidy who doesn't necessarily have a huge amount of crowd control. He's got some slows, a silence, that kind of stuff. So is it kind of important to just bring as much utility to the table as possible and still kind of maintain damage? Um, it all depends like on the play style, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, if you don't have utility in mid lane, you can bring it other way. Like, you can just pick Sona or Zyra, and like Zyra's team fighting potential is like pretty much broken like, with her ultimate. She has everything you need. She has like zoning potential with her plants. She has AOE knockups, and like her damage output is actually really decent for support. So if you lack like uh, utility on mid lane, you can just pick it pretty much in um, uh, in support role or jungle role even. And for example, Zed doesn't have any utility as well, but Zed is like the best mid lane. Like. It's like uncountable in mid lane, and if you have Zed, you can't really lose mid lane. So it's like a super safe pick, super good mid pick, and he, he fits everything. Like he can split push, he's like really good in team fight as well, if you know how to play it. Like it's really hard to play it at a certain level, but if you, if you know, and if you're a Zed player, like Nuke Deck is probably like, I think by far the best Zed player. Like he equals even Faker, in my opinion, on, the, on Zed. So if you have a really good Zed player, it does like you can do everything you want, and he fits every comp, and yeah, he's just like the best champion in the game, I think, right now. So you guys are one on one right now. Um, what's kind of something that you're looking to move on, at least and improve on, uh, as you, as, as the rest of the group stages are going on? Because we've got, a, we've still got a long way to go. Um, I guess the most important thing is like to to watch the replays of SK Telecom one. Like even when we only played them once, I think we can learn like ten times more out of every scrim we have been playing in the last weeks. I mean, we we played like MVP Ozone, like the Samsung Galaxy team yeah. as well, and. Very, like we went like two tour or one three or something, but the streams have been re going really good in our favor, and we learned a lot from that already. And if you only play like European playstyle and like only Gambit and Fnatic were like the only scrim partner because everyone like else breaks, it's like pretty much stale, and you know what they do, and like you don't really can, like you can't really focus as well. But if you play against Koreans, like you have so much to learn, and I think we learned we already discussed about the loss uh, against SK Telecom one the first game, and we already like learned like so much out of it, I think, and it's like to transition what we did wrong in that game to, into the other. And I think if everything goes right, we can like advance for the group stage, I think. Nice, cool. We definitely wish you the best of luck. Yeah. Um, do, you got, do you have any like sponsor shout outs? I know you recently got a Twitter. You recently got a Twitter. I got a Twitter yesterday, yeah. Nice. And how, how's that kind of going for you? Uh, yeah, I, I'm just tweet like, yeah. I think it's going good for me and I just like tweet around a bit and yeah, I got pushed a bit by like N-rated. Our coach yeah. and analyst, like, yeah, he does. He deserves some credits because, like, he helped us a lot in the in the boot camp. Yeah. And yeah, sponsor-wise, we have Steel Series as our main main sponsor. So, nice, yeah. cool. And, and what is your Twitter? At uh, Marcel Feldkamp. Cool. And I'll definitely put that along the bottom of the screen. Okay. Um, so yeah, thank you for taking the time. Good luck. If you guys want to uh, give us a follow on all our world's coverage, you can follow us on Twitter at lolking.net, and you can also uh, give us a subscribe on YouTube. Give me a follow at Matt, at Matt Demers. You can tweet at me for any you know, suggestions for interviews you want to hear or anything fun like that. But for now, we'll leave you guys uh, to watch more great league action. Have a great day.